Holden privateer Larry Perkins has overshadowed the factory teams by scoring the fastest time in unofficial practice for Sunday's 2 East 1000 at Bathurst. Mike Raymond reports Perkins Commodore nudged out race favourite Mark Scaife. Mark Scaife opened the Bathurst batting as he finished the media day in August, punching the Red Commodore around the circuit to record a personal best of 2 minutes 14.79 seconds. One second slower was Aussie champ Glenn Seaton in the Falcon, but nobody seemed interested in muscle flexing so early in the day. Larry Perkins changed all that when he dashed out of the pits and lit up the track to Pip Scaife by one-tenth of a second. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, there's so many people think that you've simply got to have the biggest and brightest stickers on the car and the uh, biggest bank account to go quick. Dick Johnson remained third fastest throughout the two sessions, while Charlie O'Brien found himself in the hot seat of the Alan Moffat Falcon when smoke began to fill the cockpit. Sentimental favourite Peter Brock trailed the pace setters, preferring not to show too much too soon. Practice was relatively free of incidents, save for this spin by Peter Gazard in the second GIO Commodore, and Joachim Winklehock's lose in the little BMW. David Brabham and Wayne Gardner also got into a little paint swapping late in the day, but thankfully their cars finished intact. Mike Raymond at Bathurst for Seven Nightly News. Falcon driver Dick Johnson today slammed the sports controlling body CAMS, claiming the Holdens have an unfair advantage in the lead up to Sunday's Tui's 1000 at Bathurst. Johnson says the Holdens have more downforce and it was time action was taken. Mike Raymond reports. The Commodores set the pace from the opening moments of qualifying and once again it was the Mark Scaife and Larry Perkins show. Not so happy Ford frontrunners Glenn Seaton and Dick Johnson who believe the Falcons need more rear wing to match the pace of the Holdens in qualifying. When you consider that there's six Commodores in front of two Falcons and two of the best teams in the country, it is very difficult to say that it's fair. Scaife set a blistering lap of 2 minutes 13.064 to finally topple Perkins for fast time. Larry tried to respond, but blew an engine on the run to Caltech's chase and spun in his own oil. Yeah, it was LP's day. He probably went better than we thought he'd go yesterday. And uh, our car, we didn't get a go on new tyres, and today we did. We only had to have one go, and it was plenty good enough. Traffic congestion on the mountain foiled a number of front runners, including Peter Brock and Dick Johnson, who also saw his second car spin with Cameron McConville at the controls. Others to encounter traction problems included Neil Crompton and the GIO Commodore, Laurie Donoher and his privately entered Holden, and even Glenn Seaton, who headed west to Orange at one stage. And they say the serious stuff starts tomorrow. Mike Raymond at Bathurst for Seven Nightly News. Commodore driver Larry Perkins has thrown down the gauntlet to Mark Scaife in his quest for a hat-trick of wins at Mount Panorama. Mike Raymond reports. It was D-Day for the serious teams and the pace was on again between Mark Scaife and the Prince of the Privateers, Larry Perkins. After yesterday's outstanding form by the BMWs, the Little Bivers just failed to make the top ten. But the old guard here are hard to shake when they're serious. Fastest of the Ford runners was Glenn Seaton, who cranked out a 2.14.3 to be fifth on the queue behind a quartet of Commodores. I'm not surprised at what times we are doing. I thought there would be a little bit more, but uh, not a 13 dead or a 12.8, which Larry did. And uh, I really just got to concentrate on the race now and um, have a good race package. Ahead of Seaton, the two telecom holdings of Wayne Gardner and Thomas Mazera, they've been consistent throughout qualifying, but not as fast as defending champion Scaife or Perkins. He sat them all back on their ears today with a blistering Two twelve point eight seconds, and is again brimming with confidence for the big one. There's two two races here. There's this uh, practice qualifying little deal, and then there's the real one that starts Sunday. So far, we're heading this uh, little sideshow, but the real important one's yet to come, and that's a whole new kettle of fish. The tourists didn't steal the spotlight entirely. Brad Tilly raised a few eyebrows with this concrete cruncher, while the HQ Holdens were literally off the wall. Mike Raymond at Bathurst for Seven Nightly News. Victoria's Larry Perkins is firmed in betting for tomorrow's Tui's 1000 at Bathurst after grabbing pole position this afternoon. And in the Battle of the V8s, Holden has taken round one of the contest against Ford, with Commodores occupying the top four spots on the grid. Mike Raymond is out at Mount Panorama for Seven's exclusive coverage of the big race. A huge crowd packed Mount Panorama looking for something special. Neil Crompton appeared capable of providing the first upset till he coated his rear tyres with oil on the run to the chase and wiped out any chance of a front row starting spot tomorrow. Sentimental favourite Peter Brock took an agricultural approach to the first turn but also lost valuable time. Few of the drivers could repeat their best times of yesterday, though for a spell Wayne Gardner headed the list after a near-perfect lap. 
The more experience I get and the better I'm getting and I feel more confident with it, particularly here, it's a fairly daunting track. His teammate Thomas Mazera improved by 0.4 of a second, while the Fords of Dick Johnson and Glenn Seaton did a tough against the Holdens for sheer speed and will share the third row tomorrow. Well, it's better than poking the eye with a burnt stick, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> As expected, the two East top ten came down to a two-car shootout between Mark Scaife and Larry Perkins. The defending Bathurst champ responded magnificently by turning a lap of 2.13.5 to hold pole just long enough for Perkins to go out, do a faster time of 2.13.1 for pole and a $15,000 payout. It does make you puff, but uh, that was as good as I could do and... Uh... I kept looking for this damn oil, but I didn't see any. The support races were spiced with a number of incidents that should keep panel beaters in work for weeks to come. At Bathurst, Mike Raymond for 7 Nightly News. It was David versus Goliath, and tonight the underdog is the king of the mountain after Victoria's Larry Perkins took out the Tui's 1000 at Bathurst. The privateer took on the big boys, and he crossed the finish line ahead of Mark Scaife and Jim Richards in another Commodore. Wayne Gardner finished third. Warren Sim has all the action and drama of Bathurst 1993. The weather was threatening, but for the thousands on top of the mountain, the return of the V8s was worth braving any conditions. The HQ Holdens gave an early taste of what was to come. And a whole lot are going to join him. And as the big guns took a final leisurely roll around the circuit before the start, the roulette set the scene for speed. Racing Perkins by the country mile. Wins the start. Scape is novel by about three on the inside as they come roaring up to the first turn. From Dick Johnson's car, we watched Perkins and Scape Scaife set the pace. The Within laps, Scaife had the lead. And Scaife wants to lead this thing. No Glenn Seaton's race suffered an early Seaton mishap. Locks it up right in front of him. Oh, dear, dear. And then Johnson came off second best Johnson in a scrap with Gardner. And he's collided. There's been a collision. He's Johnson and Gardner have both spun. John Hewson was trying to be helpful while the Brock car was sounding anything but healthy. The panel beaters were kept busy all day, Radisic and McConnell coming to grief on the mountain. While the battle between Scaife and privateer Larry Perkins was gaining momentum, Johnson's day came to a shattering halt. T-Bone Johnson, he was the innocent victim in that. He was trying to get past and the Everlast Commodore got sideways on the ripple strips and just left straight across the track pushing Johnson right into the fence. As Johnson so went to John hospital with an injured Rocky ankle, co-driver John Bauer was furious. He's mind his own business and got torpedoed. It's just it really, this is like a million dollar sport and uh, I think the licensing standards are, you know, leave a bit to be desired, don't they? The wall was certainly popular, Win Percy joining the retired. With Jim Richards at the wheel, the number one car looked set to make it three in a row. But when they came in for a final fuel stop, Perkins roared into the lead. We've got a race in our hands, folks. Larry Perkins. He set Perkins and Hansford drove to perfection. Despite light rain, they persisted with slick tyres. Richards chased hard, but the Perkins fans were well and truly celebrating. I was very much in tune with my car. Absolute faith in the Dunlops. Absolute faith in my machinery. Couldn't have been better, and I'm that happy to let the win from the front. Absolutely ecstatic. It was Perkins' fourth victory at Bathurst, no doubt his sweetest, as the V8s return. Warren Sim, 7 Nightly News.